Hey, my name is John. Uh, I'm an electrical engineering student at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. And today I'll be showing you a video I recorded of me uh, taking apart my BlackBerry Classic to replace the keyboard on it. Um, for this you're going to want a T5 Torx screwdriver, a SIM ejection tool or a paper clip, and a J0000 Phillips head screwdriver. And uh, I'm using the iFixit 64-bit repair tool kit. And that has every part that you would need, plus uh, way more than you would need for this repair. Um, I'd recommend getting parts off eBay, but um, for the price of a screen, uh, you can get a non-working phone that will have all the parts that you're going to need to fix your phone. So I would almost recommend getting a non-working BlackBerry Classic instead of just buying individual parts because you'll usually save money in the long run by doing that. As you can see, there's no silver ring on my trackpad and my keyboard was getting worn out. So that is the part that I want to replace. So um, I would recommend using a plastic pry tool to kind of dig around the bottom here, but you want to be careful because the charging cable is a little exposed, uh, the ribbon cable for the charging port. So I would recommend going from the side with the SIM card. Um, and if you don't have the plastic tool, you can just stick something around the SIM card slot because that's where you'll have a little more wiggle room to get underneath the plastic back of the device. And uh, this is a pretty safe area to apply some pressure. I mean, there is the charging ribbon cable, as you can see there, that you really don't want to damage. But other than that, everything's pretty covered up. And there is a bit of glue on the top of the device. Um, so it's a bit of a challenge to get it off for the first time. Now what I'm going to do is get a T5 Torx screwdriver. And I'm going to start working around the perimeter of the device. There is a, pla a black plastic plate that covers the phone. Um, so first what I'm going to do is remove the battery cable. Um, so I'm going to remove the T5 Torx screw from there, and there's also a small Phillips head screw. Um, my screw was damaged, so I don't have to remove that, but that's where it is. And I'm going to remove the ribbon connector there that has the battery connections, like so. And after doing that, I'm just going to work my way around the perimeter of the device. Um, removing all of the T5 Torx screws. Um, this guy might have some screws missing. Um, again, I've taken this apart before. Um, but this is the first phone I've ever taken apart, like model. So I'm, you know. And there's not too much information on these guys, so that's why I wanted to make a video of how to do this. So I'm just removing all the Torx screws. There is another small Phillips head screw on uh, the other side of the device from the battery connector, the other side, the one with the volume buttons. So you might have to change your adapter for that one which that is, that is the screw there that I'm going to have to change my adapter for. Um, that one I'll remove. And these screws like to stay in that back cover. And you can just leave them in there and it'll still pop off the phone. That way you don't lose your screws. Okay, this is for the battery connector. This screw goes all the way through the phone. So you'll notice on your battery connector it only has one screw on it. That's because this one goes through the back of the phone to the front of the phone. Holds everything in place. 
So I'm going to swap over to my small Phillips head adapter. And I'll remove that last screw on the side there. Like so. And there we go. Don't forget that one on the other side as well. And this will start to lift up, but we're going to have to turn over the phone. And uh, there's two more torque screws under the uh, chin cover of the phone. And you want to gently remove that without damaging your keys. Um, I had some stretching going on with some of the shift keys when I was working on these different Blackberry classics. So you don't want to break those. You just want to kind of have your tool going around the chin of the phone. Okay. So I'll put that aside, bring back my T5 Torx adapter, and I'll remove those two screws. And these screws come all the way out, so make sure to keep them in a safe place. There's one, and the second one is here on the other side. Let me zoom in on it for you. There we go. And there it is. Okay. Now that all of these torque screws have been removed, I will remove this back plastic cover. And now we can see the main board of the device, the charging port. Um, and if you're only replacing your battery, you're done with the teardown at this step. But I want to change my keyboard, so I'm going to start removing these connectors. This is the keyboard connector here, and just before this one, I removed the power button connector. Uh, and these kind of pop off like Legos, as Cherry Rig Everything would say. There, I just removed the USB cable connector. So, uh, now that all of these ribbon cables have been disconnected, I'm going to start removing the headphone jack screws. That's not in a lot of instructions online. I mean, I only saw one page telling you how to disassemble this phone, and it didn't say to do that. But if you leave it attached to the frame of the device, it'll be really hard to get that connector back in. So I would suggest disconnecting it. Or not disconnecting it, but removing those two screws there so that it's stuck on the stuck on the main board and it all comes out as one piece. So you're going to want to start wiggling underneath the main board to separate it from the frame. You only want to do it on this side um, because on the other side there are two very small ribbon cables that are very easy to damage. So only gently wiggle around on this side I believe is the side with the SIM slot and SD card slot. Yes. So now I'm going to remove those two small connectors there. And they are for the volume buttons. And uh, there's another ribbon cable. So those come out. Um, and I show close-ups of the... Oh, well, there we go. I'll zoom in here for you guys. These two ribbon cables come out. As you can see, I left the camera in place. That is fine the way it was. But, um, your notification LED might stick on, so you would gently pull away that from the camera unit. Um, if you don't, if you pull on it too hard, you might damage your notification LED, which would be terrible for a BlackBerry user. And I'm going further into the frame because I want to change my keyboard, so these are all small Phillips head screws that I'm removing. Um, and uh, there is a hidden one underneath some metallic felt, and I'll show a close-up of that. Um, that there that I'm touching is the notification LED. It's attached to the power button, 
So you have to be really careful that you don't damage that. Um, but it is pretty easy to replace. Uh, you just have to get the frame separated from the screen and keyboard, which is what I'm doing now. And uh, that would also be for replacing your volume buttons. At this step, you can replace the USB port, um, as you can see. And I'll even be removing that in a bit. But I'm still working on removing the Phillips side screws that are around the frame. These are very small screws, so you don't want to strip them and you don't want to tighten them too much when you reassemble the device because it's easy to break them. You don't want broken screws stuck in there. Okay, still working my way around the frame. There are two small black Phillips head screws that hold the keyboard and screen together. Make sure you remember where they where those two screws go, but otherwise the small silver key the small <laughs> silver screws can go uh, interchangeably in there. If you see that black ribbon cable sticking out of the middle of the device, you'll see there's another small orange ribbon cable connected to it, and that is for the trackpad. If you only have to replace your trackpad, all you have to do is disconnect that ribbon cable going from the trackpad to the keyboard ribbon cable and uh, pop out the old trackpad and put in your new one. I did that on a phone and that was pretty easy and it works well. So here, um, I'll show you a close-up here of the felt, metal felt type stuff and there's a screw hidden behind that. Make sure you remove that or you will probably crack your screen trying to take the frame apart. Here I'm removing the USB port from the frame of the device, and if you were trying to replace your USB cable, you could just pop a new one in and you'd be done. But again, I'm working on swapping out my keyboard, so I have to go even further in the device. Now, I believe if all of my screws are removed, I'll just have to wiggle this around for a bit, and uh, eventually it will separate and I'll be able to get in deeper. So yeah, all my screws are out and I just need to apply a bit of pressure to where these metal pieces fit together and hold each other in place. You don't want to apply too much pressure because you don't want to bend the metal frame. And there we go, it's separated. Unfortunately, my camera stopped recording when I actually replaced the keyboard, um, but there is instructions online, and I'll link to that in the description. Okay, so I've replaced the keyboard on my device, and now I'm just working on putting it back together. To so make sure that your... Um ribbon cable connectors are not sandwiched between the frame and the screen and keyboard assembly. And at this point you're ready to start putting those screws back in and reassembling your device. Hopefully all of your parts that you've put back in work and you've got your device back into working order. And again you really don't want to tighten these small screws too much because uh, the top of them will snap off or you'll strip them and then you will have a uh, weaker structure around your phone and uh, it will make repairs just a bit harder in the future. That's happened to me a few times. Okay, so just getting in all these screws around the phone um, pretty much just get the black ones back in around the keyboard and screen and then you can work your way around with the silver ones and doesn't matter what order you do you, what what order you do those in I'm gonna put the power connector back in and you only need one screw for that which I'm showing you there um, you're going to want these two ribbon cables to come back in, and those are for the volume keys and uh, something else. Um, 
So those will go in. Make sure that your camera and headphone jack connectors are tight. And you can uh, fold the phone back together. Okay. Um, not too much action here as far as putting screws in. But, um, yeah, make sure that's all snugly fit in. Get that headphone jack lined up again. And uh, there we go. Headphone jack is in position, and two black Phillips head screws will go in there. So I will uh, get the right bit for that and uh, figure that out. Okay, here we go. Putting in the uh, screws for the headphone jack. If you were replacing your headphone jack, you just put the new one in there instead of putting in the old one. Okay, oop, touched my camera lens there. I'll make sure to clean that. There goes the USB connector and the keyboard connector. Clip those back in. You don't want to forget to do those. And up there, that is the power button and the notification LED. Um, again, make sure that your notification LED is still seated in the proper spot. And uh, hopefully you didn't damage it when you took apart the main board from the frame. I'm going to put this black plastic cover over, uh, over the device. Make sure to clean that camera lens again before I put the back cover on. And uh, just torque screws around here and two small Phillips heads, so I'll work on putting those torque screws back in. Okay, very nice. Get that one on. And this one, is cool. There we go. Just working my way around here with these torque screws. Get that one in there. And that one. Okay. And, uh, well, make sure the battery's in tight, and I'll put in this torque screw here. The order that you do this probably doesn't matter, but I suppose you could do it in a bit of a star pattern like they do with the uh, nuts on a car, uh, on a wheel of a car to kind of spread out the tension. I'm just kind of working my way around here. And now I'm going to switch to the Phillips head and uh, get that little guy in there. Don't forget to put in those two small Phillips head screws. One for the battery connector and one on the uh, black plastic cover. Of course, the one on my battery cover uh, snapped. So I'll be just putting that on with the one T5 Torx screw. Um, I don't think it'll be too important because uh, all it's doing is holding in that connector and the back of the phone will be kind of holding that in place too. So I'll tighten that. There we go, and then I will put in this screw here that goes through the uh, back plastic cover thing through the device um, and kind of holds the charger cable connector in place. Okay, so now I will put the back cover over the phone 
I'm not going to snap it in just in case I forgot something, but I'm going to be putting on these torque screws here. Um, the two T5 torque screws. And I wouldn't completely put everything back together just in case it doesn't uh, have everything connected and you have to reopen it. But, you know, just together enough to test. It's easy to forget to reconnect some of those ribbon cables, so it's always a good idea to make sure that all of your hardware is connected and working properly. A good way to do that is with the BlackBerry Virtual Expert app. Um, if something isn't working, uh, the first thing to do is to open up the phone again and make sure that all these ribbon cables are properly connected. This one is for the keyboard, other one was for the charging port, and that top one is for the notification LED and the power button. It's possible that these ribbon cables could have been damaged, uh, in which case you would need to replace that part. So there you go, that's how to take apart and put back together the BlackBerry Classic. It's easy to break all those little ribbon cables, but once you know how to avoid them, it's not too bad of a phone to work on. Thank you.